Okay, so I have a little bit of time while my son is asleep. So I thought I'd do this video since someone asked me about it. Um, so this is the only supported spindle I've got and I really like it. So I haven't bought another one. Um, and this is the little spindle bowl that I use with it. just sits in your lap. But I thought it was a lot easier to use um, something sitting on a table for the video. Um, if you can get one of these ones with the tiny little bowls in them to start off with, they're great because the spindle doesn't have anywhere to go. It kind of just sits in the middle there and it doesn't tend to um, be able to run around on the surface or anything. It's just going to sit in that one spot and um, I don't know, I really like them. But it comes down to personal preference a bit. So I had a look, hunt around home, and this was about the only thing that I could find that um, would kind of work. I know a lot of people say that you need something with a really nice rounded surface and everything, and yeah, that is a lot better, but you can get away with something like this as long as you just start it in this edge already. Because if you start it, if you start it right out here in the middle, you can see it's even just hard to get it to stand up like that. It is just going to take off till it hits the edge anyway. So just push it into the edge and kick it off that way. Okay, so a little bit about flicking the spindle. This is how I start. So you want to go right to the tip. You can see it's narrowed down here a bit more. And these are actually thinner so that then you can get more revolutions per flick. If you did it up here, then you've got to imagine that the surface is going to run along your thumb like that and see it's probably only going to get around once or twice whereas if you look at the tip you can get an awful lot more revolutions per flick. So grab it as far as you can from the tip, uh, as close as you can to the tip sorry and then what I'm going to do is I just put it in the little bit there of my finger and then I'm just going to roll it around my thumb and down like that and then I tend to flick it back into here so it's kind of hard to show you doing that in slow motion because my finger is just going to flip off it but if I do it quickly you can see it kind of just drops back there and that's just I just let it run its course that's kind of where it wants to go naturally when I spin I don't actually spin with it back there it's really hard to spin with it back there but if I was just going to be flicking a little bit of, uh, I don't know, just adding a little bit of extra twist or something like that, then it might end up back there. That's where it's naturally going to go. And I think when you're beginning, it's certainly worth practicing doing this. Um, I'd do it for, even if you did, three, say you did three or four flicks a day, just to try and get used to it. Because... Um, if you suffer from RSI or anything like that, I do along here quite a bit. It just helps build up that muscle and it helps add a bit of muscle memory. Everything is going to change once you start spinning. So it's it does help you with your spinning because, you know, you need to learn how to flick it effectively and all you can do is practice to do that. But um, everything changes once you start spinning because your brain's trying to handle, you know, four or five different tasks at once and it's probably just going to become pretty messy. But it's still the one thing that I think is worth practicing a little bit. Um, it does help. I did it. I think it made a difference for me. So this is the fibre that I'm spinning here. Um, I have so much of it. It's really, really, really nice. It's a um, merino silk um, from Glenora. And what I do is um, I break off a reasonable chunk. I'm doing that with this one because of the stripe colours. I found it really difficult to maintain a really nice colour and not just end up with a muddy grey colour um, if I did big chunks of it at once. So what I've been doing, and I've actually found it's really easy to spin this way as well, is I just look at the colors and I think oh well that pink and orange will kind of spin up together okay and I'm not going to fret about these few little blue strands that go in there that just adds a little bit more dimension to it I'm just going to pull it off like that and I'm just kind of being a little bit careful with it 
so then I try and keep in that group of colors there that I want. I mean, if you had all one color and you wanted to just pull off a, like a half a chunk of that, then you probably could. I found I just want to make a nice long color run so um, of each different color. So I, I pulled off the long sections. Um, the other reason why I'm doing that as well, and I do it with any fiber to be honest now, is because I sweat really badly, particularly in winter, and um, merino is not going to help with that fact. And if I have it like this, I find it a lot easier to hold it really gently and lightly, and I don't tend to sweat and make it felt, because that can be a real problem. Um, I have that problem a lot when I spin on the spinning wheel in summer, um, so I have to be quite careful with that. Now. What you could do if you want to, and particularly when you're starting out, might make it a little bit easier, is you could pre-draft a little bit, which is just pulling it out a little bit. Um, and sometimes these uh, can be quite tight. This here has obviously been blended like that. It's not been dyed like that. But if you buy fiber that's been dyed um, in the roving, it can be quite tight. So sometimes just even just pulling it even a tiny little bit see because I'm not pulling it much because I don't want to make it any thinner too thin I don't want to make it too thin because if it's thinner or close to what I want to spin it at um, then it's not going to um, spin up very well because part of the cohesion of a yarn is made in the drafting when you draft something it just um, it's more cohesive than if I just pulled this out and then just spun it. If that makes sense. I'm not sure I'm making sense there. But anyway, it, it's just more cohesive if you draft and spin at the same time. So, when I, um, when I spin, a couple of things about the spindle. Um, when you have to coil from the bottom to the top up here, obviously. And when I do that, I try to put my coils, I try to make my coils reasonably close together. If they're, if they're like, like heaps far apart, like this, then it's going to be really easy for that to just start to slide off. So particularly first through few, if you make them quite close together, it's going to be a lot, oops, it's going to be a lot harder for them to just slide off while you're you're spinning they will still slide off if it's not under a nice tension but it's just a lot harder for them to slide off okay and once you start building up your little temporary cob here then it's not really going to be an issue anyway it's just when you first kick off your next one so when I join not there um, the last bit that I spun, I will have actually spun it right up. I don't leave a little fluffy bit on the end. I like it spun up completely. And then you see it will naturally kind of taper out at the end here. And that's good because it means then that the join won't be so bulky. Because bulky, joins can be a bit bulky sometimes. And when you're learning, it doesn't really matter. But as you get better, it gets better. So I just have the little end here drafted out a tiny little bit. And then I just hold, I mean, look, there's only seven or eight, nine, ten strands there. And then I'm just going to pull it out like that. Joins always give people such anxiety, I think. But if you've got enough twist in there, I'd probably put a little bit extra twist in the join there. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. And then you can see there, it's pretty tight. It's not going anywhere. And that's all you need. It needs to just be strong enough. So then when you finish it and the yarn um, comes together a bit better, it, it, it'll it probably solidify then anyway. You know, it won't, won't really be an issue. Um, if it stays together while you're doing your temporary cob and then when you have to pull it all off and put it onto your bottom cob and that, then it's going to be fine once you've plied it and everything like that. So... Um, I've just done a little spinning here while I've been talking, but we'll break it down a little bit and have a look at it. It's a little bit hard with this camera angle, but um, we'll work with what we've got. So, 
when I actually spin the thing that I'll show you here I'm just drafting it out a bit so I don't have to think about it too much because I'm going to focus on the spinning so I spin it there and then I allow when I pull it across to draft and such I allow it to pull the spindle into my fingers here so I flick like this and then I allow it to pull to pull it across flick and allow it to pull it across obviously I'm pulling quite hard here so I can demonstrate it to you and really you don't even pull it uh, you probably wouldn't even feel it that's how gently you pull it just when you bring your arm across it's naturally just gonna kind of fall across so um, so when I spin it actually rests in these two fingers so I try to hold these two fingers together at least at the very start particularly when I'm just loading what I've spun with um, with drafts so if we just look at that I want to put a little bit of extra twist in this so I'm just going to spin it and then you know hold it in these two fingers like that now the other thing that I do is I quite often let it spin whilst I am doing my drafting so when I do that I actually close these few fingers around it because I want to use my I close these few fingers around it because I want to use my thumb and that finger there to help me draft help control my twist so and you can see there that that's pretty much what I'm gonna do except when it's spinning I'm gonna pull these together but I'm gonna make like a little it's gonna be like a little cage like that I don't know you know it's gonna have a hole in there but not as tight as the actual spindle so you can see there I just got it spinning and then I close those fingers around it and if it stops it doesn't matter it does not matter one iota if it stops you can keep drafting a little bit if you want to you're gonna to have to be careful I mean there's no real twist in there so of course if, if I didn't let any twist in there then it would just come apart but then I just add a bit more twist and then to you see that I do this little thing where I just flick it on but to practice doing that I started out just doing this hand doing it on do, 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 do. and then I would do little tiny flicks because you need to get a feel for how fast that's pulling it in and how fast you need to move your hand across because eventually what will happen is is that you'll come in like this and your arm will, your hand will come up so you go out and you'll come up so you're ready to spin and I mean you've got to build in to into your subconscious as well how when you need to come up and how much you need to get there and I still stuff that up sometimes I come in too low and oh I've got to add a little bit more like that or whatever so um, to then practice get to the point where I can spin the spindle and draft at the same time then what I'd probably do is spin a bit and let it stop and then I'm going to draft out a little bit and then I'm going to spin and then I'm going to close my two fingers there close those two fingers there and draft out and drop and draft out and drop and when I drop that twist travels up the drafted bit enough that I can kind of let it go and feel okay about it it's not going to just fly apart because um, there's not enough twist there and then if I just give it a little pop like that pop 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 all that twist will go whoops down in there and do, 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 do. accidents happen pop this bit off there That is the worst. I hate it when your fibre gets in there. Anyway, that's okay. So it's a bit tight there. I'll just pop that. You can see there, where I popped like that when it was a little bit extra twisted, it just come undone. So we'll just get this back on here a bit more. So, um, yeah, so I have a little bit of twist in here and then I draft it a bit. You can see that it's a bit twisted here. There's a little bit of twist there. So I'm going to move reasonably far back and that just lets those fibers that are twisted up here 
they're actually going to end down here somewhere. And there's no point pulling on them because they just break up here. So you need to come back a bit so you pull on all the other fibres that aren't twisted in at that point and pull them out. And leave the little ones that are twisted in there, they can stay there. And that's the whole premise of drafting. Well, especially when you get to long draw. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, just leave it, let it spin a little bit, draft a little bit. So I've got a bit of room to move here. And then I'll give it a good spin, hold it with my little fingers there, and draft and drop, draft and drop, draft and drop. And it's stopped, that's okay. Give it a little pop. And then bring it back in. And then eventually I'll get to the point where I can go spin and draft and drop and draft and drop and spin and then turn on and then spin and draft and spin because I want to add some extra and put on. So really you just need to keep practicing each individual little bit by itself. You're not just going to get it all at once and I it's a bit like driving a car you know you're not going to get it straight away um, you might get one bit really well and not other bits and then when you try to put it all together it all goes to pieces um, it's not the end of the world it's lots of practice um, I found that what worked well for me was practicing I just get a little tiny chunk of fiber and go right this I'm gonna spin so maybe you know a bit like this I just spin that every single night and then you build it into your muscle memory a bit um, that helps a lot and then once I got to the point where I could kind of it was kind of coming together okay then I actually found out by accident um, that singing a song helped me a lot to spin better because I started focusing on the song a bit more and I mean to start off with it was a mess but I started focusing on the song a lot more and it allowed the spinning of the fiber to start to move into my muscle memory um, I wasn't thinking about it as hard. It's not going to work with the song that you know really well. Um, the songs that I actually sing are nursery rhymes to my kids. Things like um, Old MacDonald, where I have to dynamically come up with a, an animal. Um, you know, I don't just have a great big list of animals that I always do the same pattern. You know, I pick different animals all the time. So the songs you have to think about a bit. Um, you know, 98 blue bottles standing on a wall or whatever. That worked really well. Um, and then I also spin in semi-darkness when um, my kids are going to sleep and I sing a lullaby. So, um, you know, sometimes these things help really well if you take away one of your senses a little bit or try to focus on something else. So, um, what else was I going to say? Oh. So the other thing I'll talk about as well is um, when I wind it on, I might just quickly do a little bit of uh, long draw type thing as well here. I don't do it very often with this stuff. I don't, I find because it's roving, it's not prepared for that. Um, it's, it can be quite difficult because the fibers are too well aligned and they just don't come off. You can do it from the fold, but I wouldn't want to do that with um, this fibre because then I just end up with a muddy grey mess. So, um, but you, you can do it, you certainly can do it. So I grab it up here near where the the, um, the twist is and pull it out a little bit so I know it's drafting nicely. And then I just spin and then you can just draft here like this and then let it go and you let a little bit of twist in and let it go and that lets a little bit of twist in. And I can feel it's just really like going to, it feels really loose when I pull now. Like it's just going to come apart. And that's when I know oh, I need to give it a little jog, put some more of this twist in here. It's not quite getting up there. And then that that's as long as I'd want to draft for anyway. So I'll just spin it back on. And then I'm going to just draft it out here a little bit. And that's stopped. Um... 
I guess the hard part too is going from here to here to grab it. You tend to drop it a lot, but you kind of just get used to it. It's, it's one of those things where you just need to practice it. The fibre will guide your hand a little bit. See, this is why I don't do it with this fibre very much because um, it, it gets, gets locked up really easily and then it can just get a bit frustrating and you can break it. Um, you break it a bit, so I don't I don't tend to do that with this. I have done it, you know, but it doesn't matter. You do what works for you. Um, but the important thing to know when you do when you do do it is um, I'm not holding it here. This is just kind of guiding it. I'm actually holding it back here. And because of the way this finger is, it actually can't hold it very tight. Even when I try really tightly, it's not going to be too... It's in this little gap here. And I can't actually physically push this down really tight. If I had something big and round in there, I could. But because this is soft and slippery... I can't hold it really tight so it, it's not you can't hold on to it with grim death it's not going to work now I've got this bit here that I want to is a bit thicker than what I want so I'm just going to unspin it a little bit like that twist it and pull it and then let it go and the twist will go back in there no probs um, sometimes if it gets really if I put heaps of twist in here and it gets really jammed up and you just can't do it just let it go, flip it around a bit and then grab it from a lot further back and it helps just distribute some of the twist down there so then it will release a bit more up here, it just spreads the twist out a bit really and it's not going to affect your ability to drive down here because look there's like hardly any twist in there, a breath of twist in there. One other thing I forgot to mention too is that when you want to get this twist into your um, fiber, you need to have it at a bit of an angle. It needs to be at an angle that is less than 90 degrees. So if we do it like this and I hold on to it, you can see that the twist. It, sure, it travels down there. There's heaps of twist in there, so some of it's going to travel down there. But it kind of doesn't want to travel down there, and I really do need to pop it. And it's still kind of a lot more here than what it is down there. But if you pull it down this way, it travels up there a lot better. So you can see it's not, it's not all focused here anymore. It's kind of moved up here a bit more. And then, so to get the twist to go in here... It just comes off the point a lot easier in that as well. You want to do it from that top point there. And that's why I bring it up to add the extra twist. And then to wind it on, that's when you want it to be at your 90 degrees. It's going to wind on a lot easier that way. And then when you come up. So the last thing is how I normally... Um, move it from the temporary cob onto the top bit up here. I'm just going to draft this little bit out. Oops. And I'm going to spin it right to the end. Okay. Then I'm going to get this last little bit. And what I'm going to do, I saw this on, uh, someone else did this. It was a great idea. It's not my idea. Because a lot of people advise putting it in here. And that just puts so much tension in your fingers because you've got to try and jam it shut and this is so thin. I, yeah, it just doesn't work well for me um, because then you need to hold it under tension between these two fingers. Then it just slides out. I think it does anyway. It drives me insane. So get your uh, middle finger there, hold on to it and wrap it around. I'm oh, sorry, not your middle finger. Let's try that again. Get your second middle finger <laughs> I don't know what the name of my fingers are it's terrible anyway 
wrap it around here at the knuckle there a few times because um, if you release tension on it you don't want it to just come undone and then what I'm going to do is take it behind my pinky here and then across the front there of my thumb and around behind the pinky and across the front of the thumb behind the pinky across the front of the thumb behind the pinky and then with the spindle I'm just holding it loosely like that and so I've tucked this finger in here so I can push it against there and what you're going to do by doing that you add a little tension to the spindle so it doesn't just because if I just let it go it's going to just start look see it's going to all twist up and that so you want to add you want to keep a little bit of tension you don't want it to just whew, fly off there um, it'll just be a nightmare And that little bit of tension also helps you know whether your joints and that are good because if they're not any good then it'll probably come apart. So I'll just pull this off here and then I'll show you this here. So you can see here that with holding these two fingers apart is actually putting some tension on here. So it's not going to just come off. I've probably done that a little bit too tight now but anyway it's got a bit pink. So to get it off what we need to do just to um, put the fibre on the spindle here, it needs to be quite firm so it doesn't come loose and that's why I'm not going to do that flick to get it on there because if I flick to get it on there it's not actually going to be very tight um, and it doesn't create a nice cob. Um, if you spin with a wheel it's exactly the same premise, the fibres will start beating into each other and it'll just be messy and because um, the spindle's kind of freeform, like I put this in a bag, in my backpack and stuff. You don't want those fibres to be loose, you don't want them to be able to come off um, or slide up the shaft at all. So I'm just going to put it over here, the spindle over here out of the way. So to get it off, you just turn your hand like this. I wonder whether you can see that. I'm going to give it a hard time. Move that over there. So you just want to turn your hand like that and she'll just come off but you need to keep it under tension so make sure that you come right into your spindle and then just let it kind of come off and it will just kind of flick off a bit and then as you get better this gets better you just got to be careful to make sure that you do keep your fingers apart so it stays under tension because if you hold them, if you can't start coming together, then it's not going to go onto your um, spindle in a nice fashion. You'll end up with lots of twisties and that. Um, and it also means psh, these can pop off. When that happens, it's not the end of the world, but I have had to throw away big chunks of yarn because it has been a bit the end of the world in some cases. So, um, you know... Just try and be careful with that. Now, if worst case scenario did happen and did come off, but it stayed on one finger, something you can do is if you pull it, it's probably not going to work for me now, but if you just pull it and play with it a little bit, you should be able to put your finger, your thumb back in there, and instead of being twisted, it's just going to be a loop like that. So don't freak out. If you can keep one finger in, then you can probably recover it without having a big twisted mess. So I'll just do this last wind on in the camera view. So now it's just coming off my finger. And then to store it, what I do is I do my twists really close together. And then the last little bit, I'm going to actually twist it right on top of itself and it should just sit there shouldn't come undone I've not had it come undone before maybe there's some fibers out there where it might come undone but this merino and silk and other straight merinos and stuff like that that I've done doesn't seem to and then to get it out you just pull on it a little bit and she just come out there that's it ready to spin again join on off you go so I hope it's been helpful. Um, there's lots of other spinning 
and spindle spinning videos out there. Um, I'm a big believer in watching lots of videos or looking at what lots of people do. That's how you learn new things and one person can give you an idea um, on how that will work and someone else might help you with that. So this is a little Tibetan spindle. I've never used a Russian uh, spindle or fang or anything like that and I know that they don't spin as long so you probably couldn't maybe um, draft and spin and stuff with them quite as effectively. Uh, not to say that you can't spin as effectively with them but you might not be able to get that um, what do they call semi-continuous type spinning going and that doesn't mean uh, that's no reflection on you that every spindle is different so it's important to keep that in mind not every spindle will be able to uh, work with every single method of spinning either so um, so yeah don't don't be too hard on yourself if you can't exactly emulate someone else and the other thing I want to say is that when I first learned to spin with this spindle it was shit it was really hard I hated it. I put it away for ages. I've actually had this guy for over a year and a half and it's probably only been the last uh, four or five months that I've been spinning on it pretty consistently and constantly because I got this fiber and I can't spin this thinly on my wheel and it was just really upsetting me because I was losing all this beautiful color into this horrible gray mess. So I don't know, sometimes them, you've just got to get the right motivation to get going but Anyone can do this. Anyone can spin with a spindle. It just takes time and practice. And if you're not motivated to take the time and effort to learn it, if you if you give it up, that's fine. That's no problem. Maybe you go, well, you know, this isn't worth my effort. That's okay. Um, but I don't want to hear you say you can't do it because you can. Just requires maybe more time and effort, smaller sessions uh, more often or more cups of tea. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm a big believer that anyone can do any of this sort of stuff, um, given the right sort of motivation. Obviously my motivation was some really nice fibre that I didn't want to screw up anymore and you know everyone's motivation is different. So um, yeah, I hope that makes you feel better if things aren't going the way you planned. Uh, things didn't go the way I planned with it straight away either. Alright then, um, I'll catch you later. Thanks. Bye.